Okay. There we go. Press probably about record or something for you. Oh no, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, she's going now. Okay. Just up under your shirt, Dad. Just to hide the wire. Yep. I've been here. But I don't know why I said that, but I did. Under your shirt, because you see your whole wire. Okay, and then I can't see you. Put it in your shirt, Yassi. Yeah, well, I did. Which one? Thanks, Chris. I'm just going to go back to the scene again. Yep. Yep. Back there. Yep. 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 interview and then let's we're going to take a look at your trailer okay and when we come back we'll have okay okay let's see if i can remember that okay. <laughs> i usually don't <clears throat> i don't know if you've seen the show have you seen the show no i've just seen a couple of little clips yeah on the, online or whatever okay good there's a lot of bloopers a lot but that's what's fun. Yeah. That's what makes it real. Yeah. Let's <laughs> see. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Fuck <clears> who's <throat> ready. That's how they're right. Okay. 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 I don't have my mat. Usually Matt does my countdown. Oh well. Welcome to Our Current. I'm your host, Amanda Marini Road. This week I have with me Dennis Jack. Okay, wait a minute. Just hold on a second there. <laughs> so. It's Yachu. Just you pronounce Yachu. it. You pronounce it J as a Y. It's a Ukrainian name. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome to Our Current. I'm your host, Amanda Marini Road. This week I have with me. I'm going to do that again. Just one more time. <laughs> just say, Dennis, just, don't be scared of it. Yachu. 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 Perfect. Yachu. Perfect. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Our Current. I'm your host. <laughs> you guys got me laughing at the beginning of the show. That's not good. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Our Current. I'm your host, Amanda Marini Road. This week I have with me a local filmmaker. His name's Dennis Yachu. So welcome to the show, Dennis. It's great Thanks. to have you on. Thanks for having me, Amanda. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I had the pleasure to meet uh, Dennis at the Cornwall Regional Art Gallery. Uh, we had a short film screening there, and that's where we, he debuted his uh, short film with us. So I just wanted to talk to you about that and Certainly. just about your project that you're currently working on, okay. and then we can go on and delve into sure. all kinds of other wonderful things. So just talk about Neuronets for us. Neuronets is a, a film that... Uh, encompasses total bizarreness. I could say it's one long lucid dream. Uh, it encompasses the effects of time lapse. If uh, people aren't that familiar with time lapse, that would basically uh, encompass, if you've ever seen on Discovery Channel, for example, some of the clouds going across the sky very fast, uh, car light trails, um, the moon moving across the sky, people moving very, very fast paced, so on and so forth. So everything's sped up, not in real time. Mm -hmm. um, there is a storyline behind it, but uh, I could say it's one big lucid dream. And you'd have to see the trailer. Even the trailer doesn't do justice. Okay. Um, you'd have to watch a film once it's completed, which would be in the fall of 2012. That's great. Yeah, it, I saw all kinds of amazing symbolism, and it was very abstract. But Thank you. I love it. It reminded, reminded me of uh, perhaps a Bravo video. If you ever watch Bravo videos, yes. Some of them, they, you know, they're certainly it, it's very open to the to the audience, mm -hmm. so the audience can walk away with whatever message they want to walk away with. Mm -hmm. And yes, sometimes there is a theme and a message, but it's really sort of leaves the viewer sure the power. So Absolutely. And so, yeah, I just. Uh, is, does most of your work uh, revolve around sort of abstract, sort of uh, lucid imagery? That's basically what I'm aiming for. I would like to do projects in the future that revolve around that, uh, possibly some stop animation. Um, there's many directors out there over the years that have done fantastic work. Um, Guy Madden, uh, the K Brothers, um, 
wonderful abstract work. Mm -hmm. uh, the typical North American movie, not criticizing it, critiquing it these days, you have to have your sex scene, you have to have that explosion. Whereas if you look at a lot of foreign films, films with these subtitles, a lot of people don't like to read the subtitles, they're fantastic, Amanda. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fantastic. I'm going to read more. Yeah, absolutely. So have you always, how long have you been doing filmmaking? Are you self-taught? Like, how did this come to be your baby? I mean, how, why, why are you doing this now? Well, a long story short, if you want to hear a little of my past, uh, right. I uh, received a degree in radio broadcasting from Fanshawe College in London, Ontario, and I'm originally from the Windsor, Detroit area. Uh, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Mm -hmm. I have to give them that plug. And uh, moved to Windsor, was a major market radio, didn't enjoy it. Uh, shortly after that, moved to Toronto and worked for Telegenics in Toronto. Now, Telegenics, that was a the mid-1980s, they did a lot of the video work, camera work. I was a camera operator there, and this is for a lot of the uh, top 40 groups. I uh, did a lot of uh, post-production, editing, so on and so forth for telegenics, but I couldn't express myself in an art form. So I was like a gypsy all over Ontario, went westward on the 401 Amanda, hit Windsor again, and started up a fireworks company. Went to school wow. for that, yes. And, uh, but you know something? This is art current. A pyrotechnician, Amanda, is much like an artist. You know why? I totally believe that. <laughs> the black sky is his canvas, and fire is his paint. So I did that for a number of years, but I had to come back to my passion of film work. So I ended up back uh, up the 401 like a crazy gypsy roaming, and ended up in Cornwall, where I'm here to stay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Have you, uh, have you, are you fusing the two, the two uh, skills that you have, the pyrotechnics and filmmaking? Are you trying to, have you created anything of no. the like yet? No. Because no. that would be something else to see. It too. would be. Yeah. Maybe I'd take somebody else's display and incorporate it <laughs> into the, uh, the time-lapse uh, uh, film. But, uh, I really like your, your comparison to the, the, camp, the sky as the canvas, though. It's the same way I feel about the stage sure. and, and the, the dancer or the, the, the actor. Or Absolutely. Actress. That is their canvas, and that's the moving picture is mm -hmm. right there. So I can totally see that. Have you always been uh, expressive? Have you always been artistic? Do you... Do you since ch childhood, or have you, are you more of a, um, a logical type of learner? What's my producer wouldn't say I'm logical. This camera's on right now. Mm -hmm. By the way, my produ i got to give her a plug. Judy Katie, my producer for Neuronets, I'm going to need a little more money. There, that's over and done with. How's that, Amanda? Um, yeah, I've always been, you know, I don't know when it started, Amanda, but that's a good question. It makes me uh, do a little bit of thinking here. I would say... Just prior to my years of getting into going to school for radio, actually, uh, probably my first year of high school, okay. I was very involved with uh, the school radio station, which was a closed circuit station, you know, and um, just to be able to move people. I always said whenever I did fireworks or when I did uh, other film work, my films have to have two elements to be successful. If they don't make you laugh, they don't make you cry, something is missing. And I always love critique for my work. I always love critique. I welcome critique. People will watch your work and say, Dennis, you did a fantastic, you got to shake them and say three or four times, what's wrong with my work? They'll tell you, I appreciate that. I cherish it. I cherish it because that's the only way I can better myself. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's why you keep coming back to the short film nights too, I think. I think absolutely. You know? At the Cornwall Regional Art Gallery. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for people to just sit back and talk about the work and, and help each other out. You know? Yes. And that's the bigger picture, really. And to learn. Yeah. You know. Other people's tricks. And Make new friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Get the support system there because, you know, it's always great to have more support, especially with people that are in the same oh, I agree. art yeah. form. Um, so, do you, uh, do you have a certain type of uh, way of planning out? what you're going to do uh, in terms of, like, when it came to Neuronets, did you say, okay, I want to, I want to create something about this message, this or a storyline, like mm -hmm. you said, it does have a storyline, mm -hmm. or do you just throw yourself into it and then see what comes from the, the shots and what, like, so a what little, is your process A little like? bit of both, Amanda. Interesting question. Um, I do know the ending. I won't tell nobody that. 
My producer knows it, that's about it. Not even the parents in Windsor, nobody knows. Um, I do have a storyboard that I am following, and I stick to it probably 50% of the time. When I get the shots back to the studio and I'm editing, eh, this shot may work, may not work, go with the music or, or not go, so I critique a lot of my work. I'm, I'm my own worst enemy, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, again, it's the only way I can better myself. Yeah, no, absolutely. I feel the same way sometimes. Uh, that can really impede the whole process, though, if you're too critical. You get bogged down sometimes. You know, very much so. Happen. Yeah, very much so. And even depressed sometimes. But yeah. it is a passion that you come back well, you to. You give so much of yourself. Right? Sure. Like you said, you want to move people. And you, you, can't don't, just move you don't people. want the overload. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. You can't move people without uh, drawing some energy and some of yourself out. That's yes. just part of it. Um, there's a certain amount of time between the shots that I'm taking for the actual Neuronets uh, production. Um, I don't want to take a lot of the equipment out in the cold weather that we're having right now, Amanda. So uh, springtime, summertime, fall, I'm very, very busy. Very active, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I uh, just wanted to ask you sure. before we, we go to break, um, sure. we're just going to be rounding off our, our interview here. Uh, if, what's one of your favorite films that have uh, really moved you or in, influenced your work? Or oh. maybe one or two? I would say Stanley Kubrick. Okay. Rest His Soul. A Space Odyssey 2001. The reason is, I'm a little smug, and so I could kind of compare it to my film that I'm working on. Well, I can see the I, I could never outdo him, okay? But uh, I hope he's looking down, smiling at me for saying this. The very ending, I don't know if anybody recalls seeing that uh, film, Space Odyssey 2001. I'm pretty sure I've seen it, yeah. yeah. They call it the star child, the fetus at the end, and the monolith. Okay. And there's no real meaning behind it. So it's your interpretation. What is the ending to the film? What does it actually mean? And that is something along the lines of neural nets. Right. You know, the uh, ending will be shocking. Well, I'm very much anticipating it. And on that note, I think it's a great way to, to finish off the interview because, you know, walk away with what you will. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Thank for you very here. much, Amanda. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So with that, let's take a look at Neuronets, and after the break, we'll have Angie Waterton, a local photographer. <laughs>